Welcome back, everyone. We are so excited to be back and to begin our live episode of DSM's Black Art Matters. So we're going to begin like we do with every episode with three incredible performances by three incredible artists. But first, I just want to uh, give a huge shout out to our accompanist today, the incredible Cherish Love Robinson. If you don't know her, you should. She's an incredible Dallas-based uh, music director and actress, and we are so honored to have you. So thank you, Cherish, for being here with us today. And with that, I'm going to introduce our first performer, uh, Audra Scott, who is the head of vocal studies at Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. Audra? Thank you so much, Audra. That was incredible. So the second performer we have for you is going to be Sasha Maya Ada, who is a Dallas-based activist and artist. Sasha, feel free to come take it away. Do you ever have this feeling when you wake up in the morning that you're in love, but you don't know with what? It's this feeling that strangers you want to kiss a man at the post office or the woman at the dry cleaners or you just want to wrap your arms around life life itself but you can't and this feeling wells up and there's nowhere to put this And 
then you just become unbearably sad and you have to go lie down on the couch. I'm not particularly smart. I'm not particularly beautiful. But I suffer so well that when a stranger sees me cry, they see a river they haven't swum in. Am I acting weird? Thank you so much, Sasha. So last performer we have for you before we jump into our panel discussion here with these three amazing artists uh, is a Dallas legend. I don't, think I, I don't think it's too much to say that. A Dallas legend, Broadway performer, and a member of Dallas Theater Center's Briarly Resident Acting Company, the one and only Liz Michael. Thank you. They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. They say there's always magic in the air. But when you're walking down the street And you ain't had enough to eat The glitter rubs right off and you're nowhere hey, You're nowhere They say the men all treat you nice on Broadway but looking at them just gives me the blues. Cause how you gonna make some time when you ain't got but one thin dime? And one thin dime won't even buy my size 13 shoes, no. Oh. Look at him. They say that I won't last too long on Broadway. I fooled them, it ran over a month. I'll take a Southwest plane for a home. They all say, but I drove, honey. Yes, they're dead wrong. I know they are. Till I go far, I won't quit till I'm a star on Broadway, on so much, Liz, and I'm sure that while Broadway misses you, I can say that Dallas is so glad to have you back. So uh, thank you all so much. While we get set up for the panel discussion, I'm going to kick it back over to Craig and Kathleen to thank our sponsors one more time. Thank you so much. I mean, what incredible um, performances by four incredible women. 
Thank you so much to Liz, Audra, Sasha, and Cherish on the piano. That was amazing. And we've just been so lucky. We've had uh, the opportunity to listen to so many wonderful acts, musicians, singers today, and we've just had a, an amazing experience. So it's been a real pleasure being with you today and hosting, getting to learn more about this wonderful organization, learning, uh, having the opportunity to, to be part of this effort. So please, please make sure that you donate so that these wonderful artists that you've been seeing have the opportunity to keep performing. Please go to dallasdigathon.com and donate to the 24-Hour Dallas Emergency Relief Fund. This is the reason why we're all here today. And I also want to personally thank everyone for being a part of this and allowing Kathleen and I to be part of this incredible time with everybody. Um, we want to thank, again, our sponsors, Central Market, this beautiful venue here on the levee, Dallas Musical Network, Gail Halperin, Randall White, Dallas Voice, Keurig Dr. Pepper, Ron Ruggles, Zalot Pizza, I apologize, I've been mispronouncing that all day long, and Morris Donuts. I'm soon going to turn it back over to Devon Miller and the Dallas Summer Miracles, and thank you so much for the time that we allowed us to spend with you. Thanks, everybody. Clean, we appreciate it. Um, thank you. So now is the fun portion. We en so enjoyed your performances, um, but now is my favorite portion, the panel discussion, and we'll, we really start diving into this topic of black identity, being a black creative, and being a black artist, not just here in Dallas, but then how that art resonates all across our industry and all across our country and even all across our world. So we start every episode with the same question I'm gonna to pose to each of you now, and we'll just kind of go down the line here and then bounce off of that. And that question is, for you personally, what does black identity mean to and for you? And uh, we will start with you, Audra. Great. So black identity to me um, is heritage and culture. Um, for African Americans in America, since it's been taken from us, that's something that we're gonna have to try to figure out all throughout our lives. Where is our heritage and where is our culture? What belongs to us um, as blacks or African-Americans? So that's what black identity is to me, mm -hmm. heritage and culture. Thank you so, so much. Sasha? Uh, today, on this beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful day, <laughs> beautiful day, my black identity is a vice president elect for this country. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think the power and the strength, the strength and vulnerability, um, and the love is my identity today, for sure. Thank you. And Liz? Black identity for me. Um, and I think it encompasses kind of what both of these ladies talk about is community. Uh, the community in our city, in our world, uh, our city, our, our state, our, it's, it's our community. And I think that uh, reaching out and being uh, a part of something bigger than ourselves, uh, and it helps bond our identities and our culture and our heritage and our futures. So I think community is what. Thank you for that. And t speaking of reaching kind of beyond ourselves, when we talk about being black artists and this culture that we bring to that, for you three, what do you hope for when individuals watch your art like they just watch? And what is the message you are hoping to resonate out there through that work as a black artist? Anyone? One of the things that I think is fairness. Um, in the arts community, just when we go to the table, just making sure that you look at the talent, look at the, um, the character, 
look at every make sure that you look at every aspect and make sure that th that we are resilient and there are a lot of things that we can do and not just passing a bl black artist to the side so just being present and fair just fairness and fairness in um, the arts I love that especially that phrase passing black artists to the side I wonder is that something that y'all each of you have encountered in your careers that idea of being passed to the side because you're black I often get passed to the side because I'm not a certain type of quote unquote black um, there is an idea of what a black character is in film or in stage um, and it is a very narrow and a very stereotypical idea. Um, and if you cannot do that stereotype or do not want to do that stereotype, work is a bit harder. Uh, but that's, that's been my experience so far. I've been very, very fortunate that uh, a lot of people that have cast me have thought out of the box uh, because I've played goddesses and ghosts. And it wasn't until recent, um, I guess maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little longer than that, uh, but I, I had played a variety of roles. I had never played a maid until I played Caroline Thibodeau in Caroline or Change. So if you're gonna play a maid, I mean, that's a maid to play. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but um, I, I think uh, as, as uh, Audrey was saying, uh, the, 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 the equity and diversity, uh, I've, I've, I've been very fortunate, like I said, in my career not to have uh, been overlooked because of my blackness. Uh, but I think maybe something also with my stature might have had, you know, a more accepting uh, eye or appealing eye to some people. So, yeah. So, bouncing off of that, Liz, and talking about your stature and the presence you even bring to a room, right? Do you or have you felt in your careers that you have had to either modify what that stature is <laughs> or work four times, five times harder than your white counterparts to ensure that that stature and that gravitas is seen, just to be seen in the room, quote unquote? Oh, it's so funny. You, I'm gonna take this one first, Lord, yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, it's so funny that you say that. My first um, entree, uh, not my very first one, but as a professional at the Dallas Theater Center, I was a young 20 some odd year old lady, um, just anxious. Uh, to do this thing called theater, and I met my mentor before that, and he, he was an acting company member, Akeem Babatunde, and he took me to the Dallas Theater Center, and um, there was a changing of the guards. The, um, the old artistic director had passed away suddenly, and a new artistic director had come in, and I auditioned for him, and I, I'm just larger than life. I'm me, you know, and, I, and he was like, I don't think anybody will take her seriously and he would not cast me. And he was, I, my, my mentor and a couple of other people who really believed in me that were in that acting company said, well, if you don't hire Liz, we don't want to do the show. Good for them. And it, it happened to be the very first show that was directed here. I'm not gonna call his name out, but you can look in the history books. It was a streetcar named Desire. And it was funny because they had a scholar to come in and do the talk back about his, his experience with this production. And he said the most authentic person on the stage was the one woman that played Eunice Hubble. <laughs> but he didn't think anybody would believe me. He never cast me again. It was 10 years later. And I worked regularly at the Dallas Theater Center, but that director would not hire me for any other show. Wow. Yeah, but I still got a career out of it. Yes, you did. Yes, yes she did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Been on Broadway and back, so yes. And going again. again. <laughs> yes. So, I, Audra, I'm interested in your career in academia. Um, what obstacles have you faced as a black creative working in a heavily segregated district mm -hmm. historically as well at a performing arts high school in the middle of an arts district that some claim in our city is not for those who look like us? Well, I actually, um, there are opportunities for um, diversity. I will have to, on behalf of the Arts District, who is very um, giving to our campus specifically, and others, um, they, 
they don't exclude us and they don't exclude um, any ethnicity of student that I have seen. I have been able to work alongside with a lot of the arts district and they didn't see color in the kids. So I would have to say in academia where I am right now, which this is my third year, so it hasn't been that long. However, um, the students, if they want it, they can get it. Like they just need to make sure that they want it. So the opportunity is there and I came in right when, so I've been there two years, the Black Lives Matter thing got really big this year. However, I feel like I've had an opportunity to groom them to be able to step into this role. Like the carpet is laid out now. There's an opportunity for you to walk right in. So I feel like in academia, for me, the only stress is that I just make sure that they know who they are, whose they are, and where they want to be. So that's, I think that's my task as a teacher. And that's what I'm going to- And that they're ready to, when that opportunity presents and, and that itself. And that they're ready. But I cannot sit here and say that the opportunity is not totally there because the, I will have to say the Arts District has been very supportive to, um, to my campus, Booker T. You bring up a good point, I think, as a good segue. And it's this concept of, you know, laying out that carpet for those who are coming after us, right? To ensure that they don't face the fallbacks that we had to face when we were beginning our careers. I'm curious for you three, did you have that? Did you have a strong support system in place as you were coming up through your careers, as you now lay the foundation for those who come after you? And uh, I would love to start with Sasha, if you don't mind on this one. A cliche, but my mother. Truthfully, um, she, uh, decades of being an educator, um, taught history in the Bronx for 10 years, moved me down to South Carolina, was a guidance counselor. So being in high school with a guidance counselor as a mom, y'all, that was, whoo. Um, but, but having her there to have some foresight um, and to be so supportive, and I kept pushing back against being an educator. I was like, no, no, my mom doesn't, I don't wanna do it. And then like, I've just fallen into having to, finding that that is a pathway that she set for me and I wanna set for other people, being able to support. Um, and if you have an education system that works and that is really supportive and is inclusive, it can change lives. Anyone else wanna add anything to that question? It's so funny, I, it's not cliche because my mother was extremely instrumental in my artistic development. I begged her at the age of three to be a ballerina. And you know, she never squelched my, my dream. She never said, oh baby, that's sweet, you little chubby thing. She, and she instead, she was a teacher at, uh, she was a professor at Bishop College and her colleague was Ann Williams, the founder of Dallas Black Dance Theater. So instead of saying, sit down, baby, she said, Ann, take her. Here you go. <laughs> take her, baby. And so I started my formal uh, training in ballet, modern, and jazz at age five. And I went to Booker T. Washington for the high school at, uh, visual and performing arts. Uh, I, Curtis King was very instrumental uh, at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. So I had wonderful mentors that poured into this artistic soul that they saw. You know, that kid that wouldn't stop dancing, that wouldn't stop painting, that wouldn't stop getting on stage somewhere, and they directed that. They, they, they channeled that energy in a good way, I hope. I hope I've made them all proud, because it's my life. <laughs> Now I have, it's weird, let's see, I, my mom, if I wanted to dance, let's go get you dance lessons. If you want to sing, let's get you singing lessons. Let's, that was my mom. Mm -hmm. So she was on the right path. She was ready. But then I, um, let's see how I can say this. When I was in school, a very um, famous teacher told me that I couldn't sing. So I said, well, since that teacher said I can't sing, I'm not going to sing, but I am going to stay in choir for my life, because for the rest of my life, because they go on trips for free. <laughs> I just so. want to point out that we're all laughing, because <laughs> we clearly just heard yes, you Yes, we heart. clearly oh, just heard that. <laughs> well, well, it took my college professor at Prairie View A&M University Amen. actually the entire 
voice department or music department to say, they, it took them a year of convincing me, no, you really have something, like, please. So, but I, um, so I ended up, it took them rallying around me, so I had support. Now, as an educator, I have students that don't. So, as a teacher, I have to be my mom. So, let's see, I'm starting to teach musical theater and then I teach opera. Um, a lot of things come with that, dancing, vocal lessons, um, languages, you need to know a, a several different languages. So, it's my job to go into the community, which is why I say the Arts District has been a, instrumental to this. I, what their parents can't, because I can't say they won't, but what they can't and won't do, that's, as an educator, that's where I have to fill in that gap. So, I, I, my phrase to my students is, look guys, don't be a product of your environment. Just because your mom or your dad or you're in this situation, that does not have to be your life. Mm -hmm. Let's figure this out together, and if you want it, we're gonna get it. But, God you bless know, it's, you for it that. Just, it just starts with the mind, so they don't have the resource. We were all lucky, but I have to be that parent to several students and say, look, okay, you're behind, so let's go get you some language coaching. Let's go get you this. But you have to stay on top of it. So, yeah, as an educator, I think that's where, where my job lies. So I want to talk a little bit about that idea of filling the gap, because I would be remiss, first of all, if I didn't point out that I'm sitting here with three incredible badass black women first of all all right i'll thank accept you. that thank you and the we'll fact, accept that <laughs> uh fact like it or not that this country was built on the backs of black women a hundred percent we saw we've seen that in our history and we saw that in the 2018 midterms we're seeing that in georgia play out right now i must say so can we i just want to ask each of you what is that i don't know if burden is the right word but that calling to fill that gap what is that emo what, what is the emotional toll it takes on you is there a physical toll it takes on you or is it just something you have accepted to say this is how we must continue to climb the mountain in order to succeed okay this is gonna be don't feel sorry for me but this past year and even a little bit of now a bit of now i've been going through the battle of cancer i put those two together that was something God gave me to do. It's something I had to do. Like, cancer comes to you, you can't say, no, I don't want it. You take it and do what you need to do and encourage people in the process. It's the same thing with being black. I got it, I need to do something positive with it, and then I need to make good of it. Like, that's what God said you are and that's what you're gonna be. Do something with it. So that's. Both of those things go hand in hand. Now that I've had to go through that, both of those things go hand in hand with me. You, you have it, do something good with it. And I, I love being a black woman. It can be trying. I mean, people put us in this box. We have an attitude. We don't do this right. We, our bodies are a certain way. I mean, we get that, but I, you know what, I, I, at the end of the day when I go to sleep at night, I did everything that I could do to be a powerful black woman today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you tomorrow are, I'm yes. going to try yes, to do it again. So, yes, yeah, that, that's how I feel about that. Thank you for sharing that. Sasha, Liz. I'm going to throw this back to what you mentioned earlier about if we have a responsibility when we walk into a room to fill up the stature or to be the, you know, joyous ness the power versus the joyousness and i think it's actually both we have to do both um we're told that we're supposed to be strong and yet we're asked not to be too strong and then penalized when we're not strong enough um and i think personally a gift that 2020 has taught me is that for so much of my education as an artist the process is rooted in trauma it is rooted in, oh, well, what are the things you've suffered through and blah, 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 right? And instead, where's the joy? Where can we find that joy? Where can we find that bright light? Um, and I think that's a duality. That's a power, that's a vulnerability. Um, that's a joyousness that Liz brings in, that Audrey brings in. Um, but I th that's, that's sort of both. It's, that's what I feel my experience has been being a black woman, being an artist who is black and being here in America in 2020. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, as the 
daughter of a badass black woman and the mother of three badass black women, I think it is my calling to pass that baton uh, and, and, and lead through example. Walk the walk. My mother walked the walk. She didn't just talk the talk. And she made a difference, and it wasn't because she went out to say, well, look at me and look at what I'm doing. That wasn't ever a, an option. She did it. She rose to the occasion. Look at Ann Williams, her colleague. She wasn't trying to just, I'm going to make it. No, that was her dream of ballet and on a black body in Dallas, Texas, and she achieved that. So I think it is my calling to do the same thing for other little women, uh, young women sitting out looking, or, or, or larger, especially larger girls looking, saying, well, she's 6'1", she's a big woman, and she's not shying away. She's not cowering over in the corner trying to diminish her size and diminish who she is. She lives out loud. I'm allowed to live out loud as well. So I hope through example. And Liz doesn't know this, but she did that same thing for me. Junior year, no, junior year of college, I did a Christmas Carol with Liz, and she, it was a learning experience of anything, but she did that for me. And so the fact that she can put words to that is, Thank you're you. thriving in it. Thank you. Thank you so much, for all, each of you, for sharing that, and that beautiful connection. I want to make a little shift here, and that's this idea of artist as activist. So earlier this year, after the careless murder of George Floyd, we saw an outpouring of pressure across the country uh, to support uh, Black Lives Matter, to support calls for increased social and racial justice, um, and especially here in Dallas, in our theater scene, in our arts community, right? And Black Art Matters, a series exists because black lives do matter. So I don't want to get that twisted if anyone's watching this. This series exists because black lives do matter. My question to each of you is, we saw those increased calls. We saw pressure put on so many arts institutions across the country, and especially here in Dallas. And we saw some of those organizations step up. Some of them stepped up with statements. Some of them stepped up with statements plus actions. Some of them stepped up with statements plus actions plus actual compensation for black artists, right? Do you think that trend will continue or do you see that trend diminishing as we start to get a hold of COVID a bit more, start to get back on stage more, back in galleries more? What are your opinions on that and, and where you see our sector going? I'm going to say, first of all, if it takes a back seat, it's because we haven't kept it alive. We cannot allow that to happen as black artists. We, it, we, we have to bring in that next group of young black artists, young Latino artists, young uh, uh, Asian artists. We have, to, we have to keep it alive. We can't allow that to happen. Yes. It would not behoove us as a community to do that. Like, even those who um, are not in the minority, join with the minorities yeah, yeah. to make this happen. Like, this shouldn't be a set, it shouldn't be segregated. It shouldn't be separate. I mean, if the person is fit for the part, if the person is, I mean, it'll look good on your, it, it'll look good for you, I think. I, I don't know. It's I, what's I, right. I, it, it's what's right, and I don't understand why that, Let's, okay, let's tie, uh, let's tie this to slavery. I mean, it, it goes back to slavery. I mean, slavery looked good on them. I mean, your, your crops were done in a sufficient manner. It, it, you got what you needed done. It was, it was for done free. for free. So let's fast forward now. We by no means want to be put in a predicament of slavery again. That absolutely cannot happen. However, the same way that if we would have worked together, probably crops would have probably been better if we would have just if worked together. If we would have been happy and, and, and well fed absolutely. and well clothed and everybody could have thrived. And so I feel that way about the artists. Like you take care of your community of artists. Mm -hmm. that, that should not have a color to it. Well, we don't, we're not asking for an abundance of more than everybody else. No, we just no. want an equal, equal share. Exactly. 
I think it, I think for me, the, the disconnect that I'm seeing, right? There were a lot of theaters that came out, they made their statements, there were some that didn't, um, and then there were some that showed face and then nothing was followed up with, right? And just you even having to clarify that we're being very distinct in saying Black Lives Matter, and yet there are still people in this world who will translate that as a political statement is the issue. Because it should not be political that my life is, is it ma it preaching, yeah, preaching, yeah. Yes. It shouldn't be a debate. I don't understand it, and You're I think person. that's a that's the thing that I don't quite comprehend with theater. And 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 I'll speak for the Dallas community because it's the community I'm in, not for it, but about it. Um, we have so many connections, and our group is so small and so expansive at the same time. I don't understand why it's so hard to support in moments. Um, you're having friends, people that you go to the bars with to go get that after show beer, you know, you're making sure you run into them for a mimosa or a brunch, like you know them, you joke around with them, you have fun with them, you dive into the depths of our humanity with each other, and then you say at the end of the day, well, I can't say Black Lives Matter because I actually don't respect you on that level, you know? And until we can truly address that, that it is not a political statement to say Black Lives Matter, then we can move forward. But the arts is so entangled in our humanity and our vulnerability and like the dirtiness and the beauty of who we are that we really gotta take a look at ourselves. I think, yes. Ooh, got chills. I know, <laughs> beautifully <laughs> said. Got the chills. Um, so I know we're running short on time, but uh, I'm gonna hold space for us just for a little bit more because again, three badass black women, I don't wanna give you guys up. So kind of two final questions I have for you. Uh, and one just kind of takes a step back here, and that is, today is a historic day. We have the first black vice president-elect, soon to be vice president, and Kamala Harris. When y'all heard that news this morning, can you just briefly describe, or not briefly, take all the time you want, really, <laughs> what that meant for you? Because as a black man, I know I was in tears <laughs> seeing it, just as I was in tears in 08 with Obama when I was just a middle school student. But what does that mean for, what did that moment mean for each of you this morning when that became official? That no matter what the poll said, and I'm so excited that it said what it said, we are worthy of anything. We're worth it. When I haven't seen her yet, um, I've been watching and watching and watching to, to but we're worth it. We work hard like everyone else, if not harder, you know, with that cloud of I have to be better or, or I, not I have to be better, I have to work harder and I have to be a step ahead. That shouldn't be, let's walk all together. And smile and grin graciously while you do. Right, and, right. Mm. But that got, when, I, when that was announced, I said, we are worth it. We're worth it. Like you don't have to treat me like Oh, because she's a law lawyer. No, she's worth it. We're all worth it. Like, we're worth being in high positions. We're worth everything that this earth has to offer to us. We're, we are humans on this earth. We're worth it. So when I heard that news, I was just like, she's worth it. And before I move down the line, I wanted, just want to say, y'all are worth it because you built this country. I just want to put that Come truth on. out there. Come on. Sasha, what, what, was your, what was your feeling? It's honestly still hitting me. Um, I was in the middle of Uptown trying to get breadwinners to pick up um, for a Saturday brunch and uh, the news hit and I think because I was driving and I was like, I can't really process this right now. Let's, let's give it a moment. But I haven't, honestly, I haven't slept all week. Uh, it's just been like <laughs> sleepless nights, insomnia. Um, and I think tonight when I get home, it'll hit me. The, th the thing that I'm taking away from today is uh, the power of the space that we hold as black women and how we, it is always going to be a trial, I think, for where I am right now in my life to remind myself to respect it. Like, I have to respect that space and I can't, res I can't expect somebody else to respect it before I do it for come myself. On, yeah. um, so if I can keep doing that and Kamala, whew, she's doing it for us, right? She's reminding us that the space that we have demands respect, then like, it's only up from there. Love that, Liz. I know, I woke up 
getting ready for rehearsal um, uh, uh, in the mid bleak winter is happening at the Dallas Theater Center and I'm getting ready for rehearsal. I get in the car and my, my um, Sirius XM stays on MSNBC. And I get in the car and I turn it on and they're saying, it's over, it's done. Philadelphia, you know, put him over the top. And I was like, what a wonderful birthday present. Today is my birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. 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 Thank you to the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Thank you, America. The other four uh, million and some odd people that, that thank you. And my granddaughters, I have, as well as three daughters, I have three granddaughters. The world, when I say to them, the world is your oyster, yeah. it, the truer words will have never been rung truer than for them to be able to see somebody that looks like them, that achieves what, it, it, infinite possibilities. So, amen, amen, amen. I'm, I'm, I'm like Sasha, it's still just, just washing over me. Oh. So Y'all gonna, gonna make me cry and make me choke. Um, so I have one last question for you. Before I ask that question, I also just wanna echo something uh, you said earlier, Sasha, about Liz, and that's also, I had that same connection with you. You didn't know, but when I was in high school in Project Discovery, uh, walking into Dallas Theater Center, I didn't know that a black individual could be a part of an acting company, yet alone what an acting company was, and make that a full-time career. So you have made such an impact on the city. You all three have made such an incredible Thanks. impact on this industry and this work. But I just wanted to share that connection with you. I just have to say, I've been in that arts district since the 70s as a student at Booker T, then at the Arts District Theater, which is now where the Winspear mm -hmm. Opera House is, and now at the Dallas Theater Center in the Wiley. So thank you yes. for being a part of my journey, my artistic yeah. journey. Thank you. When I Showing saw us you, go, we're worth it. <laughs> when I right? saw you and Give It Up, and then saw it, you it, like on the poster of Lizzie Shotta Jones and Broadway, it's like, wait a minute. Is that, <laughs> what? <laughs> so this last question I have for you, uh, as we wrap up here. Um, if you could all just briefly give or say, what advice do you have for those little black and brown children who are maybe watching this right now, maybe not watching this right now, may watch us in the future, for those young black and brown children who want to be in your shoes one day, who want to follow in your footsteps of making a career in life out of their passion to create, what is your advice for them? I got a good one. I say it every day. Do it afraid. All right. Do it afraid. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to add to it since we've talked about do it afraid because you're worth it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Do it afraid because you are worth it. I'll look in the camera. Do it afraid because you're worth it. Thank yes. you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that into the camera moment <laughs> <All right. laughs> with the side fan. Um, you do not know how enough you are, and that is a journey. Dance your dance, sing your song, live out loud. Your dreams matter. Don't let anything stop you. Wow. Audra, Sasha, Liz, I cannot say how honored I am to have the privilege to be able to talk to you three today and interact with you three today and to have you share your time and talents is just, I am so thankful for. I know our industry is in good hands and our young people are in good hands with you three out there doing this great work. So thank you so much for lending your time and talents, not only to thank this you. digithon that's happening, but also to DSM, who we know we have a long way to go in this work of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So thank you so much for that. Thank you thank so you. much for thank having us. Thank you yeah. and DSM. So uh, before I kick it back over to our producers, I'm not sure which camera I should be looking at here. Uh, uh, but if you want to check out more <laughs> of our Black Art Matters series, please go to uh, the DSM YouTube page. You can find us at, at DS Musicals. We have several episodes up already with several artists uh, that are based here in Dallas. So again, thank you, you three, for being here today. Thank you, everyone out there for watching. And now we're going to pass it back off to our gracious host uh, for the next segment. 
Thank, Thank you, you so everyone. much. Thank, Thank you. you.